Hey everybody, welcome to Bitcoin and Altcoin Trading Talk. Let me tweet out the link here so people know to actually tune in. Do, 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 there we go. And Brian and Alex, if you would kindly retweet that, I would appreciate it. Oh, I'm and going everywhere with it. Go to town on it, man. Go to town. I have three uh, followers. Do you want me to retweet that? <laughs> yeah, everybody needs, what's your Twitter, Rob? <laughs> it's a Rob underscore Borden. All right, everybody needs to go follow Rob, <laughs> anybody who's watching. My avatar is like an egg or something. I don't know what some <laughs> yeah, Twitter you thing. Never set it up. <laughs> yeah, but I've had I've had it since 2012 or something. Really? Oh man. <laughs> uh, I set that up. Wins new venture on Twitter competition. What's that? That uh, we talked about the check that was behind Rob last time. That was for that uh, oh, competition okay. here at UWM um, in Milwaukee. Um, Derek Urban who. Works for us basically part time. Handles a lot of accounting and like business development and stuff. He uh, presented Coinigy, um at the small business plan competition, and we won, which was pretty sweet. Excellent. Wait so it looks like Rob took the check off his wall, though. It's behind me, but it wasn't really staying up there too well. It kept falling. Really? But you didn't go and like bring it to the bank and cash it in. Like... <laughs> <laughs> no, I told you they kicked me out. Yeah. Could, could like fold it up and put it in the ATM. <laughs> Just try to walk yeah, no, out. I, I took a picture of it with my phone, like uh, for e deposit with Ally. Oh, nice. no, I had to stand up on the chair, <laughs> so it looked real small. I had to put it on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, um, welcome back, viewers. Uh, my name is William Kale. I am from. Representing Coinigy.com, along with me from Coinigy is Rob Borden as well. Uh, the Rob usual underscore intro. Borden. Rob underscore Borden on Twitter. So <laughs> let's get the follow train started. He's going to be the next hit Twitter sensation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> along What's with trending? Us, Rob underscore Borden. <laughs> hashtag Rob <laughs> underscore Borden. Um, uh, you're just trying to throw me off track. Derailed. Is that yeah. technically a nerd? Is that what they called it? What did they call that? You guys no, remember? nerd. It's pronounced nerd. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> I think it was the uh, quarterback of the uh, of the uh, Colts. What's his name? Al uh, Luck. Andrew Luck. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, he had. Uh, do you remember? He he had the big. Uh, it was like the neck beard, and they called it the nerd. Oh know. yeah. I'm anyway. working on mine. I tr I trimmed mine up. I trimmed mine up oh, like actually, you're yesterday. Looking very uh, very sharp this evening. Yeah. Uh, on, on, on top. I'm glad yeah. you noticed, Brian. Then I did. It looks like you lost a little weight. I, I'm you... trying. Yeah, you're looking good there. Chief. Day by day. He put a lens on his webcam. Don't let him fool you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a reverse fish eye. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. trying to give you a compliment. Come Everybody on. shut up so I can give you an intro here. Come on, <laughs> okay. All right, so <laughs> we have Brian Beamish, the Rational Investor. How are you hey. this evening? Good evening, good evening. Good evening, good evening. And Alex Sturk, the man with the black hat, without a care in the world. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. I, I wish I had, uh, I guess, more to stand by my name other than Block Talk, but um, yeah, it's, it's what I do, and uh, it's going pretty well, I, I have fun, and uh, try and get you guys all the cool information and uh, and research, um, yeah, really trying hard to get slocky right now, so. Yeah, that'd be yeah. awesome, I'd love to hear more about that, obviously we're going to segue into DAO and Ethereum and stuff shortly, um, but yeah, anybody who hasn't checked out Block Talk, check out YouTube.com. I think it's youtube.com slash block talk, right? Uh, slash C slash block talk, yeah. Gotcha, yeah. So check that out. There, uh, Alex is awesome. He interviews a lot of heavy hitters in the industry and yep. got a good game going on over there. It's so. the behind the scenes on all the favorite coins out there. Yep, yep. Fundamental analysis as opposed to mostly technical. Well, we do, we do a bit of fundamentals on this show as well. We try. Guys. We dabble. We I always like to know the story behind the name. All I right. see is a symbol and a price, a number of coins out, and a whole bunch of trolls. What I love about Alex is he <laughs> basically just gives you the straight bits. Right. 
I like that about him. Alex well, knows he the gets, inside scoop. He keeps us honest. Don't buy any more Quicksilver, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stay away from that. Hey, I got my free coins. That's all I care. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you, you got that, Brian. I felt a little better about it. <laughs> the coins are going to be <laughs> off the board shortly, but what the hell, they're free. <laughs> But I don't know. Anybody from Quicksilver want to come in and uh, make your defense? Please uh, come right on down. <laughs> but anyway, how are how are things in Farmland going? I mean, geez, you were actually wearing a couple hats, you know? Oh yeah, like um, well, I'm doing a lot of 4:30 mornings, but uh, that's usually oh. a pretty good time for the social hour with uh, Bitcoin. I did um, notice on your uh, Twitter feed you were uh, you were uh, I don't know uh, that you had something about horse manure or something one day I saw on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have a little post where I just like uh, I walk up to a trailer. I'm like, "What's this horse shit?" And well, it's funny because it's actually horse shit. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, funny to watch Alex at work. <laughs> yeah, well, and then I got um, we got some sheep that are uh, lambing right now. But um, yeah, I do other stuff in my free time. Like uh, actually, beyond crypto, I uh, kind of diversified my trading because uh, Bitcoin uh, is now accepted on Steam. And uh, oh, so, you're trading funny hats on uh, Team Fortress Two now with Bitcoin, eh? Uh, I, I was looking into that, actually, but uh, I got a couple <laughs> friends who are, uh, well, addiction is a strong word, but they're very involved in playing Counter-Strike and buying guns and stuff, oh, yeah. but they yeah. never sell, and then, like, when I was over there the one time, I'm like, whoa, whoa, is there a chart to this? I'm like, yeah, yeah, check out the pricing here. I'm like, oh, wow, really? And uh, I immediately I thought of uh, a quote that you have, Brian. Um, it's like, okay, markets are trending 20% of the time, and then the other 80%, they're ranging, these markets are like all ranging, so I'm like, okay, yeah, buy this bottom, set some sales on the top, and uh, yeah, I've already got a couple of little profits coming from it, but uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting how you can apply this almost everywhere. Um, I, but they uh, got, sorry, go ahead. Oh, they got some interesting rules, like you can't sell a gun like a week after you bought, until a week after you bought it, shit like that, but you can still like, make yeah. a profit on it. Sounds like mutual fund salesman. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, actually, I had another person. Um, in fact, David, you remember our contest winner from uh, from like six months ago? He was. Uh, we were working our way through one tutorial, and he's like, "You know, this kind of it kind of seems like this is almost like playing World of Warcraft, and you go and you get some sort of epic item, and you throw it up in the auction house for some ridiculous price, and some kid comes along and really wants it and hits your offer." And it's, it's, uh, it's almost the same damn thing. And, that, and it was just like sort of a major aha moment. Okay, I think it was David. Maybe it was another guy. But uh, long, you know, uh, there's so many similarities. So that's awesome that you, uh, you could actually take advantage of that. And I actually tell a lot of people, and hopefully, you know, people who watch this show, is this stuff, it doesn't matter whether it's crypto, whether it's the S&P 500, or whether it's broiler chickens. I mean, the principles of human behavior is exactly the same, and that's so cool that you. Uh, uh, my assignment for you, Alex, is I want you to tweet out a uh, a, ch a price chart of one of these guns. I'd okay. actually like to see that, and we should do a total TA right up on it. That would yeah, be fun. Good. <laughs> That'll be awesome. I sent a new addition for Coin and GEI yeah, too. Just, just point us to the API documentation. We'll get that rolling. That would be sweet, eh? If you guys yeah, I did. Uh, I saw a video of some guy. I guess got like a thirty thousand dollar gun, kind of at her, off of some like airdrop, or you know, I don't know how they're delivered, but the, he just went crazy. <laughs> it was some live streamer, pretty interesting. I didn't even know that was a thing. I played Counter Strike way back in the day before that stuff was a That's thing. That's so cool. That is so cool. Well, there's yeah. definitely money involved, but the market maker, Valve, I think there's a lot more to this uh, them accepting Bitcoin than we know. Like, uh, I can think of a project right now in the space, BitCrystals, um, who actually have, like, game cards, <clears throat> like trading cards that are crypto assets, and then they're used in a game and whatnot. So maybe that's something you guys should look into for Coinigy, trading these assets, having uh, that kind of marketplace developed. I think, yeah, uh, I mean, we do have Verwox, um, and Verwox is kind of like um, where people originally traded their second life, um, you know, Linden dollars and stuff, and then they added some Bitcoin pairs. Actually, I think they were 
they added Bitcoin a long time ago, but I just didn't know about it. But yeah, we have them. It's VWOX, so we're kind of getting into that. But yeah, it would be cool to have, you know, more game specific type things on Coinigy and like actual fundamentals about, you know, the actual game related stuff. Wow. It'd be pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. And that would be so cool. You go into the game and there's the little Coinigy kiosk. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are like Rob, Rob behind it. With a <laughs> smile. But anyways, um, so yeah, uh, little coinage update. Um, kind of a semi sort of big deal for us um, this past week. Well, actually, yesterday uh, we launched our Android app um, finally. So um, it's kind of a soft launch. Um, you know, there's still a couple bugs in there. Um, so any users, you know, if you have bugs or issues, definitely feel free to report them um, via support. Uh, if the app uh, crashes, we do, you know, get a crash log and everything. So we're, we're kind of constantly trying to optimize it. Uh, but, yeah, definitely check out. Um, it's just called Bitcoin and Altcoin Trader on the Play Store. Um, and we have a pretty sweet video, which I don't know. Should I show the video or no? <laughs> I don't know if it'll work very well, probably. Yeah, I don't know. We'll got see. got it up there on the screen now. Yeah, there it is in the Play Store, guys, if you check it out. Oh, we're it's famous. It's not as blurry on the Play Store, though. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm on minimal bandwidth here in rural Canada. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you can also see my cracked screen. Nice. Yeah, that's what happens when uh, you, you bring your phone to the barn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, well, I was going to try, I'll just share my screen with the home as well. So here's the, um, our little intro video, just in case I'm kind of proud of it. I think it looks pretty cool. Turned out pretty I, well. I was very impressed. I think it's very sharp. Oh, thanks, Alex. Um, so yeah, just definitely check that out. Basically, you know, it connects with your Coinigy account. So um, all of your balances are available within the app. Um, we have real-time charting. Um, you can actually place trades. You can't actually connect wallets or accounts through the app yet. Uh, we have that functionality, but we're just we're trying to figure out um, kind of how to optimize it, make it more streamlined. So that's coming soon. Uh, but if you you know add your your API accounts on Coinigy.com, they will then be available through the app, and you can place trades and set alerts and pretty much close to everything that you can do on Coinigy. Um, and it's going to be a nice evolution. Let me get back on camera here. Once we get some more single sign-on uh, exchanges integrated, it'd be a lot easier to pair your account with mm-hmm. uh, the mobile app. Yeah, that's kind of the issue. Too, right is now, it's pretty pasting. painful to try to like paste in keys and secrets on through the mobile app through, and then also being on like the web with generating the keys on the exchange site and everything. It's mm-hmm. not a um, very pleasant yeah. situation. So. So we do, though, um, we do have single sign-on with, like, BitMEX, um, CSEX, and I think one other, CCEX, CSEX, CCEX, I don't know. (laughs) Cryptocurrency exchange. Yeah, cryptocurrency exchange. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, the app's pretty cool. Um, Kind of proud of it. Definitely check that out. Turn it sideways and you get a full screen chart. And, yeah, that's about it uh, for us. Uh, I guess one other thing, we are now underway on the chart scanner. I haven't been able to put much work into it since, you know, I shared that screenshot with you guys, Brian. Uh, But I did share a very, very early preliminary screenshot uh, with Brian and Alex just to get their feedback. Um, And it's coming along. It's going to be pretty sweet. You're going to be able to basically set up um, conditions pretty much on... Uh, whatever supported indicators um, we have, and get alerts on that, and then as well as see any markets that fit those criteria. Um, And Brian and Alex gave us some great suggestions as well of things to add. So yeah, that's about it for us. Let's get into some dirty altcoin trading. Well, I want to, uh, before we go on, I want to talk about uh, and get your guys' feedback on this, uh, the latest Satoshi Nakamoto, who am I? Thought. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't quite understand it uh, totally. 
Is it the same guy that we were talking about that other show, uh, Mr. Happy Face? And do you guys believe him this go around? Uh, okay, so I'm going to preface it with I have stopped reading about it because I I don't have time to keep up with the story changing every 15 minutes. Um, but where I left off was essentially um, Gavin, um, one of the core developers, um, basically met with Craig Wright. Um, Craig Wright, and yes, it's the same guy, the Australian guy, Craig Wright. Um, Gavin had him sign an, or I'm sorry, Craig had Gavin sign an NDA, which I thought, well, I, you know, I guess it makes sense, but still kind of strange. Um, Gavin then was convinced in person that, you know, Craig is Satoshi. Um, he wrote a blog post about it. Uh, didn't really provide any proof, just said, this is my opinion. And then the last thing I heard was Gavin was uh, removed from commit access because he allegedly got hacked. And that's where I left off. So, Alex <clears throat> But he said in more. person at that conference just a couple days ago that he said he reiterated his blog post essentially verbally okay. in person. So it is legitimate that he thinks at least that Craig Wright is Satoshi. So whether if he if everybody's being duped, um, which I still am pretty skeptical myself too, because I think that if he wanted to prove to everybody pretty much and make them believe it, everyone knows how he could do it, and it's like the last thing that he's going to actually do supposedly which is obviously move a coin from an old block. And, you know, he's, he's saying that that's like the third or fourth thing he's going to do to validate that he's Satoshi. And, you know, seems like he's just dragging it on for the sake of publicity. So that's why right. I, I'm still skeptical. It, but yeah, Instead of just doing it publicly, yeah, instead like, now he's just announcing... We'd all be ready to, to listen to his other proof and documentation and whatever else if he moved a coin from the Genesis block. So I think that's what would really hmm. get my ears turned well, and listening. It's funny in that interview at the uh, consensus um, convention that's going on right now, even Gavin was like, uh, yeah, like I'm pretty sure. Like it's probably him. Like he's 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 even giving himself an exit, like uh, a little bit of doubt. <laughs> it's like yeah, like well, but this is retarded. It's like it's so easy for him to prove conclusively that it is him, and just he can do it in a tweet. Like actually, the creator of Litecoin made, did put out a tweet that said like here, here it is, here's the proof. Like I'll share my screen right now, and that's all he would have had to do, and then he could have gone back to ignoring everyone. But, you know, he's dragging it out and, and saying, like, to the BBC, I don't want to deal with the press. I don't want any attention. Uh, I, I just want to be left alone. Meanwhile, he's, like, making a media circus out of it. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's meeting, you know, with people privately just to drum up more fanfare about it. Right. Which... Makes announcements about announcements yeah. constantly. It's a, it's a fascinating, uh, you know, soap opera. I don't, I don't know what's the best expression. <laughs> Yeah, I also, I don't know what the what the best outcome is either really for the market as a whole. I mean, yeah. I, still you know, I tend to think anonymity is uh, Satoshi remaining anonymous. I still think is going to be the best, you know, the best outcome. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Echo, Alex, uh, Alex, I think you're sharing a few screens. I can see me in uh, in uh, stereo, which is a bit bothersome to me. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Actually, um, somebody just uh, posted in one of my chats here that um, Craig Wright faces criminal charges and serious jail time in the UK after claiming to be Satoshi's found Bitcoin's founder, Satoshi Nakamoto. So, um, yeah, he better. So, have wait, is, this, is this stemming from his earlier arrest? Because I know he was arrested like months ago. They or they raided his. I think that was like tax stuff or something, though. Well, really? and that's the main reason why I think he's pretending to be Satoshi is just like he, he's been like taking in money claiming that he's Satoshi and then now he hasn't been paying taxes on it uh, or taking paying taxes on the money he's taken in. So like that's why he needs to be Satoshi or else he has to pay like several million dollars in taxes. Um, uh, interesting. Uh, but yeah, this, this is the UK government now, not, not the Australian tax board. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting to see. Uh, well, it, it's going to be based on, like, uh, what do they say here? 
Um, they're using anti-terror legislation in order to, like, possibly arrest him. Um, but, uh... That's scary, eh? Big Brother now can basically... All they gotta do is say the word terrorist and they can get away with anything they want. Yeah, hey, it looks like um, Bruno Prenka, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, just posted on our um, on the video a link to a Reddit post called How to Steal $54 Million from the Australian Government. Uh, I'm assuming, yeah, this is all Craig Wright stuff. Haven't read it yet, but it might be interesting. Man, so what's it going to mean for Gavin if this turns out to be that, yeah, that I don't it's know. all a farce? Like, how can he be so incompetent? No offense. Well, Gavin. it's not the first time. Like, Since uh, you're obviously tuned in to Bitcoin and altcoin trading talk, of course. <laughs> I just want to say no offense to you, but that's some pretty extreme incompetence from somebody in a pretty powerful position to be duped into believing somebody was Satoshi. Right. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. We don't, we mm-hmm. don't have proof. proof well, well, no, he, clearly not. But he's done uh, some It's not looking gr- good. He's <laughs> done right. some pretty grossly incompetent stuff. Like he founded the, uh, the Bitcoin Foundation with Mark Karpelis. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And that's like the first on a long list of things that like Gavin has just done to screw over Bitcoin. So like the <laughs> big block argument, like pushing my current away like a lot of people are just like yeah he's met with the CIA it's probably he's he's working with them to destroy Bitcoin from the inside so this might be his final undoing we'll see <laughs> just be. a conspiracy theory yeah <laughs> well on that note it's a pretty solid one I like it I'd love to check in with you guys on the inside though it's a, you have a very interesting perspective on all this well <laughs> I mean, I hope you realize probably, you know, me, the stock market dinosaur guy, you look at all this and it's uh, it's quite remarkable. In fact, we were kind of, um, you guys were talking a little bit about earlier before we were recording about the desire to sort of standardize things like symbols for different coins and where they trade and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um I noticed, because I watch the futures market so closely, I noticed that the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, although I don't even know if they actually call themselves that anymore. Everybody knows them as the CME. CME or whatever, yeah. Yeah, They're with uh, crypto facilities now, right? Right, yeah, they they listed the... uh, I don't know whether they've actually listed it, but I know that they have plans to list a Bitcoin index in Chicago now. Um, and I heard that they were going to use uh, Kraken, I think it was. Uh, oh, see, I, I just caught the, the headline, but I saw Crypto Facilities, but maybe Kraken is involved I saw as well. something about Kraken today, but, uh, oh, you know, I, I think it behooves, um, and, you know, I'm uh, the, the uh, crypto um, purists um, would probably hate me saying this, but just from a trader guy who wants to sort of depend on the vehicles that I can trade in, I've always thought just a little bit of regulation might help this community uh, quite a bit, but, you know, I know I get into trouble for saying things like that. (laughs) Sorry, crypto. (laughs) Well, I mean, you you said that earlier, and then Rob also brought up to, you know, if that authority can be handled in a decentralized fashion. I mean, that's real. you know, for the example of, I guess a little bit of the backstory is, um, you know, with, with Coinigy, we have, you know, 50 exchanges. There's quite literally no, you know, ISO naming, you know, system for cryptocurrencies. So, for example, we'll have, um, I don't even know the latest example. I think it was DGD or something like that. Um, was one currency on this exchange and another currency on another exchange. Um, But both share the same DGD symbol. Um, It would be great to have some kind of, like, decentralized kind of voting slash governance, you know, to actually allow official symbols and get the exchanges to adhere to this. Uh, I mean, that even in itself could be, you know, a tradable asset to give it a little bit of power or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, so so if you adhere to this, um, if you adhere to this new standard, basically every new coin you list is going to adhere to what's on the blockchain. Then you know you get dividends paid or something, or you know you hold a certain amount of currency as an exchange or something like that. It'd be interesting to pursue. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and it would help us out a whole heck of a lot too, because there's just so <laughs> many, <laughs> so many currencies out there, and you know, people just pick names that will. A lot of them, you know, a lot of uh, coin creators will just pick, you know, national currency symbols and stuff like that. So yeah. when we yeah. when we import <laughs> data, it, it causes issues. So yeah. maybe we get sort of standardization or something through necessity. I mean, we absolutely, this has got to happen. We can't keep having this, you know, crossing over. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, it does happen at all in the, uh, like, the main world, Brian, or, like, <laughs> the regular trading um, aspects, like penny stocks maybe, like, overlap with uh, ticker symbols? Uh, generally, no. I, I've, I haven't run into it too much in my career. Um, and... I mean, I know in the world of Forex, you know, everything adheres to, it's ISO, you know, I can't remember the code, but it's ISO something. So it's like an official naming convention. And when yeah. you're dealing with, you know, the traditional stock market, which includes, you know, some penny stocks, you're trading on an exchange. So on that exchange, they're not going to have duplicate symbols. Well, so. what, what ends up happening in there is you actually have what's called a QSIP. Right, uh, which is like this big honk and long, it probably like a key, a wallet key, right? And that's actually what identifies the security. The actual symbol that is trading on the exchange. Um, it, it. I have seen situations like uh, we have a junior market in Canada called the CEX. I think it is. It's like, uh, it's a brand new sort of, well, not brand new, a few, a few years old. Uh, and I have seen uh, symbols on, say, like the Venture Exchange is the same as on uh, the other exchange. So I have seen that, but the QSIPs would be very different. <coughs> That's the way industry uh, follows it. So maybe what the solution is is some sort of like, uh, you know, serial number or something, and that's how you go about identifying the security in particular. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, kind of a secondary thing, and then really the... the the actual symbol itself won't matter as much, you know. And, yeah. Um, anyway. But to segue, I mean, that would be to segue into the DAO and the DAO, as I like to pronounce it in my head today, the DAO. Um, that, you know, that might be some kind of a situation for you know the the DAO or something that could be set up kind of on the Ethereum blockchain, you know, or part of the DAO. Um, All right. Yeah. So uh, who wants to give me? I'm an idiot. Don't know nothing. Everybody loves uh, to learn something. So who wants to give me a crash course on what this DAO actually is? What, it's what? all Alex. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, well, if, for anyone who wants to see their crazy, you know, their their video of Slockit, um, you can go to slock.it.com or yeah, slock.it. They have a great video on it. But uh, that's the company that is building the DAO, and the DAO is essentially going to be a, the this company in the cloud that there is no um, owner to that can always be supporting their network of like smart locks, even after like maybe Slocket, you know, goes bankrupt or something. So you're never going to have like that's always been my issue with IoT. It's like, well, what happens when the service is stopped? Then y your cloud services don't work. Anyways, it's Essentially, the shareholders are all board members. So uh, you buy this token, uh, which right now um, Bittrex is offering it, or you can do it through the wallet, um, where you transfer your Ethereum into this smart contract, and then it's traded one-to-one -one for a, D a DAO uh, t a token. Yeah, I don't. it's not one-to-one, -one, though. I think it was like... Uh, 1.5 Ethereum gets you 100 DAO tokens or something like that. Oh, yeah, it's uh, 1 to 100, sorry. But uh, that's for the first two weeks, and then, uh, then it, so uh, like another, I think, 10 days. Um, and then it goes uh, to 1 and a half, and then for another week, and then uh, it decreases again. So the price is going to be going up e even before the token is tradable. But as soon as it ends, the token will be tradable on all the exchanges. Um, but, that feel, so that feels like a little bit of like a Ponzi to get people into this thing. Well, one thing that's interesting to note is on the um, uh, on the Bittrex one. One thing they've done is have an importer for your uh, Ethereum ICO keys. So if you bought into the original Ethereum ICO, which is already like 
a year and a half ago now. Um, you can basically go straight into the DAO, but um, the DAO is being run by the original like Ethereum team, like uh, like a couple of the main devs. So it is fairly well trusted, but um, this is basically like the first of its kind DAO. Uh, well, the first Ethereum DAO. I think there's been a couple other DAOs. Uh, in the space, but this one I think is the most promised because it has the proper network and like code base to actually run it. But yeah, you're, you're, this is like an IPO for the first company. It's um, it's a bit of a risk, and I actually was just messaging uh, Bill from uh, Bitrex about it. I'm like, well, uh, apparently these are going to be paying out like shares from every time a slock is used. Um, your share is going to get paid out. I'm like, doesn't that technically make it a security and you can't actually run it on? It's like, uh, I've talked it over with my lawyers. Oh, jeez. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, since there isn't actually a company like um, enforcing it, like you're not investing in an actual company, or at mm -hmm. least in the traditional sense, uh, it's not technically a security. There's no human aspect to it. Yeah, it's all done programmatically. So like when you read the terms and conditions of the Slock, uh, Slock it thing, it's pretty funny. They're like, uh, basically, we're we're hoping that the DAO hires us to continue on with us. Right. Well, yeah, that's that's the interesting thing. Um, <laughs> I was reading the, you know, I was reading about they're they're creating this beast that could potentially. Well, I'm sure they have controls in place. You know, at least you know they're going to be the majority shareholders. I assume, you know, already. Or well, whatever. right now, someone has 15 percent of it. Yeah, but. and that's most likely you know one of the core people or something like that. Um, but if you own yeah, Dow, 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 <laughs> if you hold if you hold Dow tokens, um, you then get voting rights basically. And um, the way it, the way voting it works, rights to what? Well, I'm I'm getting there, Brian. Hold okay. your horses. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, Alex spurned me on this today. So I just I read a whole heck of a lot. I bought a little just to mess around with it and see. Um, but basically, people can create proposals, and a proposal is um, any kind of digitally autonomous company or a, uh, a smart contract or a bet, or um, it can also be um, voting that some other person becomes supreme ruler of the DAO, uh, basically. Um, and as a DAO holder, you get to actually vote using your currency basically and I, I believe your vote is basically proportionate to you know what you hold versus what's out there um, but it's pretty interesting I mean you get to there's basically I, the idea it looks like there's gonna be these companies companies or people making proposals like you know I have I have a product that's going to do a and it's going to take money from the DAO uh, with method B and then it's gonna pay back the DAO with method C and that's all going to be laid out, and then the, the DAO holders get to vote on that, basically. Um, and then it actually gets, you know, built into the to the chain at some point. So, I don't know. It, it sounds cool. sounds interesting. Wait, wait and, you, and the DAO, so they're not actually coins? Well, they, they are. I mean, they're, they're essentially... Be, they're going to be a coin. Well, We're moving they, beyond they, currency. That's all. These are, these are much more like stocks, and like people who own it are yeah the stockholders. They're getting paid dividends. Like and this is like a modern stock. What is the asset behind this thing? Um, well, Ethereum. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, Ethereum. I mean, right now, this is kind of the gold rush to get in to set the base price, and then anything else in the future, from what I understand, is going to basically be through an exchange or. Um, of Ethereum into Ethereum? Well, I think I think you know Ethereum kind of Bitcoin and Ethereum play really nice. So technically, you'll be able to basically, you know. But didn't didn't we talk a couple of weeks ago about how the developer of Ethereum himself said that he thought that the price was too high? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they they found that it was a little too volatile or a little too high. But at the same time, it it all depends on like how much the network's being used. So, like, if uh, there's a lot of usage on the network, the price for, like, using uh, the network is uh, uh, goes up. Like, think of, like, uh, okay, Litecoin, they spit out a little bit of coins every day. So it's almost like a subscription model. Like, I, I, I had to pay Litecoin, like, 
eight dollars every month to be able to use or have my chain maintained. But now you have Ethereum, you can put whatever coins you want on it, and uh, like if Doge is going to be moved onto it. It's now pay per use. Like every time I want to move my Doge from here to here, um, I need to uh, <laughs> uh, I, I need to pay a little bit of a fee. So now you have like a pay per use network. But the pay per use network is, has this high level of functionality and smart contracts. So that's where you're seeing like uh, the more is being used. If somebody, the if somebody is actually going to pay somebody to use Ethereum. Did I just hear that? Well, you're you're paying the network, you're paying the miners. So, like, yeah, the Ethereum network is still subscription based, but now any tokens you create on that network, because it's like it's not just about transferring value; it's about having like uh, this world computer, and you pay to use the world computer, whether it's to host my DAO or to uh, so I don't a, know run run my. So da this DAO is a typical example of how somebody would use Ethereum? Yeah, it's, so it's very good how example. they would use the Ethereum blockchain, yeah. Okay. And a DAO so is like, this a, it's, or a smart contract in general, is like a, you know, a set of rules that has inputs and outputs, and it basically, like, you know, processes an output when it gets an input of some kind, whether it's, you know, a, a transaction from, an, you know, a coin sent to it or something else. And so, like, the purpose of a DAO is to basically do something, follow some set of rules to do something, you know, some interaction. And based off that, it might, you know, turn a profit of some kind, and then its shareholders will get dividends, and that's how it's, like, why people call it a company, basically, and why they're talking about, like, owning part of it, why that would be beneficial or something you would want. And so, so the, when they say shareholders, in this case, they're talking about these DAO coins. Yeah, yeah really, you're, you're owning DAO part of, like, a program, basically, that's not run or controlled by anybody. It just makes decisions on its own at this point based off its code. And like, if you think about it, that's basically what, say, a services, a business services company that does something. Basically, they just, like, take an input and people do work there and then they turn out an output of some kind. Like, maybe it's financial reports, you know, they take data in and they churn out, you know, financial reports. This is going to be basically doing something like that, but with no people involved and no human decision-making or anything like that. You think but, there's enough of a demand for that? Well, over time, I mean, well, this is all obviously in its extreme infancy. Didn't we talk to somebody? Who was that person that we had on, and this is probably like six, eight months ago, where they were, remember they did that really nice presentation about how they were going to... Uh, yeah, that was Gridcoin, yep. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Is that sort of the similar type of thing where they had the, uh, their, their, their coin, the story was like going to be a supercomputer? Well, I think they were more using their, you know, the the participants and the nodes were basically yeah. donating their their computer uh, processing cycles for other people to do research using their computers. Yeah. Um, and that you is know, like essentially the with token Ethereum, has the value or right, the utility, yeah. but with this, it's the blockchain that has the utility. The token is just kind of like a byproduct of it, basically, and. You know, if it gets increased use, the tokens will be worth value in order to pay fees to the miners on the blockchain. But the main utility of, like, Ethereum is the blockchain itself. It's not the tokens or transacting the tokens or storing value in the tokens. It's, it's all about, you know, embedding code that runs on its own within the, the blockchain. I wonder how you put a value on that. Well, what I think well, the it's value really difficult. To, it's all purely speculative, obviously. What, but what I, what I think the value comes from is the, the creators of the DAO, like the Slocket team, the Slocket company, has basically said we're willing to work with the work for the DAO. So now you have this awesome company that's worth a lot of money in terms of what it's going to be doing, and it says we want to work for this autonomous company. So right away you have the company has an asset that's willing to work for it, probably for a fairly reasonable price. Like if the DAO said, no, 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 screw this, we want to go have Google work for us. Well, like the DAO probably can't afford to have Google work for it. So it, it, it just won't work out that way. But 
there's a number of sort of founders to this story that have all said, we're going to donate X amount of hours of our time, and that's going to be sort of the value that this company's going to have. Is that correct? Right. That's yeah, partly correct. And you can I also look right at... Now, go ahead, Alex. Sorry. Look at the donation page, or like their, their, um, their partnership page. Samsung has already said they're putting a lot of money into this. What I think what's going to happen is Samsung's going to buy a shitload of these tokens. Maybe they're the, they're the ones with 15%, and they're going to try and sway the Dow vote to say, we want all Slockets to be produced by Samsung. Like, they're going to build the hardware. Uh-huh. Slockets going to build the software and, and help support the network and develop the network. Mm-hmm. So, like, now you have, like, companies that are like, well, we want to, you know, have part of control of this right. crazy mm-hmm. thing. We don't know who's going to have control. No one's going to have... 51% of the DAO. Like, you would have to basically mm-hmm. invest a lot of Ethereum. Yeah, so, and then what I was saying, too... Sorry to cut you off, Alex. Okay. Um, what I was going to say, too, is, Brian, to help you get perspective, I mean, basically... So I, I transferred some Ethereum into DAO today. So that means I am now basically a shareholder in this autonomous corporation, which means whatever comes up to vote, I get, you know, a percentage share of the vote in what happens here. Um, and there could be major companies, there could be, you know, 12-year-old kids in their garage proposing um, that they want to do some kind of work for the DAO, um, and the DAO, you know, shareholders like myself can then vote on that um, proportionally to what I hold, if hmm. that makes sense. Well, hey, well, this would be really interesting uh, to sort of watch how this plays out. Do you figure, Alex, this is a very natural evolutionary process and what uh, was supposed to come out of that Ethereum? Yeah, I think like mm-hmm. this is kind of what they thought they were going to build out of it. Like one, of, This is like a killer app for Ethereum. Meanwhile, it's got a couple like really good apps for it. So this is why people have been so bullish on it because there's so many different things that can be done with it and like they've built the network out specifically for these tasks. So... The DAO, this first DAO is going to really set, I think, a pace. And uh, I'll, I'll tweet out an article that kind of talks about the DAO is the future of the corporation. Like, you no longer have, like, shareholders who are just wanting a buck. Like, shareholders are the board members. So you, you no longer have, have the centralized control of companies. Um, mm. But then that requires a, a, quite a bit of active participation by the actual coin holders, right? Yes and no. Like you, you can choose not to participate, uh, but that just means you're you're essentially not giving up your vote. Like this is like this is how government works, right? Like you can say I, I live in Canada, but I don't vote, so I'm essentially giving up control to my constituents or everyone around me to um, uh, to make a decision for me. But um, the framework is it's based on everybody's vote. Whether you decide to participate or not is up to you. Correct. So it's mm-hmm. only going to be successful. Well, it's going to be successful as long as the shareholders vote for it to be successful or make successful decisions. Is right. it possible you might have like collusion where people might work together to try and uh, control fifty-one percent? Absolutely. Yeah, well, to I mean, the same that's... extent that you have that in in regular publicly traded yeah. corporations, you know, like a hostile no, takeover essentially is what in, you'd call uh, that. In, uh, in, in the stock market, we, you know, the Great Depression, we went through like 10, 20 years of them saying, hey, if you own more than 5% of a company, you've got to report. You have to, you have to tell the public what you're actually doing. I don't think there's going to be any onus here for that, is there? Well, that's the same as like Bitcoin is. It's like you can be as public or private as you want. Hmm. Okay. Well, just throwing stuff out there. I sorry to take us off on a tangent. <laughs> no, like this has been a good discussion, and I yeah. think uh, like everyone should be watching the Ethereum price because I think a lot of people are playing mm-hmm. Ethereum right now. And they're waiting for the last day of the first price setting, and then the last day you're gonna see like millions of dollars pouring into this contract. Yeah, and one thing to say too, insane. you can transfer, you can essentially transfer your DAO back into Ethereum really at any time, from what I understand. I think I don't know if you have to put in a request. I was reading somewhere on their website, basically. I think I think you have to put in like a a proposal or something like that. 
But basically, you can transfer your shares back out into to ETH. From what I read, maybe I'm wrong about that. But yeah, I haven't heard that. Um, Isn't there usually the... like a hold period or something with these things? I don't know. I'll I'll have to reread. Well, don't take that as gospel. I'm not 100 <laughs> sure, but I thought that's what I read earlier today. Ryan, one th one thing I wanted to mention about what you asked earlier about like why Ethereum is has value if it's the blockchain basically that they're using to you know for the utility, and the answer is that like every time your contract or your program that's running on the Ethereum blockchain does some transaction or processes whatever it does, it costs Ethereum for your program to run basically. So if you if your smart contract like you know makes a decision based on two inputs or something, when those inputs come in, it's going to cost a little bit of Ethereum for your program to basically run and for the output to occur. And if you have a smart, and that's uh, that's the fee of the miners validating the network. Essentially, right. Yep. But if you're so, if you have a contract that runs, you know, hundreds of times a day, for instance, or something like that, then it's going to cost you Ethereum, and you're going to need Ethereum in order to continue to be able to run your service on the Ethereum blockchain. So obviously, so, that creates demand for Ethereum, and hence, you know, is that why we had this recent bump up in Ethereum's price, Alex? Is that what you figure is going on? Well, yes, I think. There's also like the the use of the the coin, but it's also the DAO being funded. Uh, there was already like a month and a half ago when they were kind of talking about the ICO going on. They were like, yeah, we have about twenty million dollars in like non-public funding. Like it's probably between like Samsung and a lot of these other companies. So you're probably going to see like thirty million dollars in ether or more go into this thing. I think it's already at like eleven or twelve. Um, it's 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 growing fast and like. It, these are people like let, these could be original yeah. investors. And it, and I, and I just want to try and understand what you're saying. So to participate in this, you must own Ethereum. So that means if you want to participate in this, you must go and buy Ethereum in the marketplace. Correct. That's why everyone's playing Ethereum. And, and then of course, uh, if I understand, this is the kind of Ponzi. I really don't like when people do this, but it it doesn't surprise me. Typical sales. As we get closer and closer to the final date, the what the percentage uh, payout when you participate goes down to give you more incentive to buy now. Uh, yes. Yeah, so like uh, at the end of the the first two weeks, it goes from one equals one hundred DAO to one equal or one point five equals a hundred DAO. I think that's the right rate, and then it goes down again after that. Uh, and uh. then. So then we should see Ethereum's demand kind of peter out as we get closer and closer to that, right? The end of the two weeks, I, I think, will be ramping up. But right now we're on a bit of a retrace. Like, I'm looking to buy again uh, probably around 18 area uh, when I see a, a nice order block. But I've been long from, like, 17 down to 5 or 15. Um, yeah. On Ethereum, you mean? On Ethereum, yeah, like... I'm planning on investing in slot It's just I'd rather trade trade the swings until we get there, because why have it sitting in what is effectively one ETH sitting in Dow when I can be trading it up until this last day, which I think is a lot of people's thinking. And this is just, of course, the first DAO of what could be, probably will be, dozens, if not hundreds, if not thousands or more of DAOs that will and or other types of you know smart contracts and other things that will run on the Ethereum blockchain uh. presumably you know several years down the road from now and to participate in the Ethereum if somebody didn't own any of this the only way they can do that is by buying bitcoins first well there's some CAD and uh, USD and Euro For pairs. The most part. I mean, are those traded somewhere where you can do USD deposits directly? Like, I don't know if, you know. Yeah. Well, like, when I saw this last rise in, in Bitcoin, like, when we kind of broke out of the triangle and slowly rose, like, and reading just all, like, the the posts from the Slock at Slack, I'm like, I feel like somebody's getting more Bitcoin just to buy Ethereum. Like, that's mm -hmm. what's going on right now. <laughs> I think that's definitely the case. 
Because I don't know anywhere where you can just basically deposit USD and buy Ethereum without converting it to Bitcoin at some point. Is there... I mean, it pretty much have to be US-based and it's Coinbase and like BitBit and I don't know who else. Well, our our friends in Vancouver have a a Canadian uh, ETH market. Kraken has a couple fiat pairs, um, and that's why I think Kraken has kind of been uh, partnering with... Uh, yeah, Kraken is probably team. maybe the only place. Yeah, interesting, because Kraken met when that news of the CME. I wonder if the CME is getting involved in all this. Yeah. yeah well, I've heard a lot of people talk about how they want to move options uh, settlement and future settlement to these smart contracts. Well, and Freddie, you should also know that one of the co-founders of... Um, of Ethereum is uh, Anthony uh, Doreen, I think is his last name. Um, he is now the chief technological officer of the Toronto Stock Exchange. So this is kind of like the fundam- or the framework of like what the future of the stock market is going to be, at least in my opinion. This is why I think Canadians should be so bullish on Bitcoin because we really have like the tech being developed here. Like Hmm. Uh, so, uh, Maybe you guys there, have something to do during the winters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there was a lot of Canadians that were heating their houses with Bitcoin uh, early on. That's why I think uh, there's more Bitcoiners per capita in Canada than in the U.S. But there's also more Internet users per capita than the U.S. So, yeah, there you go. Um, but there is a conference, for, uh, uh, Brian, in um, September in Toronto that's hosted by... Um, the Ethereum Foundation, Anthony, and uh, the Toronto Stock Exchange. So I think you three guys should be coming down in September. You know, we'll, you're welcome to crash on the farm, and uh, we'll, we'll drive to Toronto and check out this conference. It's going to be real cool. I'm in. Let's do it. Yeah. Oh. And anyone watching at home, like, you guys should be coming out. Like, uh, Toronto, I think, has a lot of the money side of things, and Vancouver has a lot of the dev type stuff, but... Canada is a sweet place to be if you're. Let's uh, hold like a like a Woodstock type festival. <laughs> like <a tall> <laughs> on Alex's farm. <laughs> uh, it's funny because I live just outside right? of a town called Woodstock, so. Yeah, you're pretty close to there, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, very close to Woodstock. So. Yeah, there you go. Well, it's safe. <laughs> Anyways, we haven't really looked at a chart deck yet. Yeah, do you, do you so want to take a look a... at the Ethereum chart, maybe? Like. Yeah, actually, I've got it on the screen here. Pull her up. Uh, let's see what we got. Well, don't be stingy, Brian. You're holding out on us. Uh, You're the rest of us. Uh, watching uh, um, you talk, and it's interesting how you had mentioned that um, you had been uh, playing Ethereum long here. Did you play this little double bottom down here? Uh, no, I didn't there because I've been like long for quite a while since like the bottom of this massive W we formed. Uh, oh, wait, that's I thought you were on the one hour chart. Um, yeah, no, I, I was buying from 17 down to 15. Yeah, so you were loading up uh, 17 down. Yeah, right around there. 15, yeah, all right. You know, it's cool. I think um, uh, you and a guy named Brandon Rigo would probably get along really well. Uh, he's our uh, good old mountain man level, probably one of the best crude oil traders I've ever met. And uh, he just basically sets his watch on the 61.8. So I, I, I've been noticing, I don't know whether you saw that price action, but that, for the audience, that is such a fantastic example of how powerful that 61.8 fib can be. Uh, I think Ethereum's got, like, a beautiful market maker on it. Like, he paints a wonderful chart here. And one of the reasons I bought that level was, you can see just before all those green candles in a row, that massive breakout, um, yeah, right there. Um, that's the same kind of order block area we were in. So I, I definitely wanted to buy that again. So it, it was. Yeah, you can you can really see the battle in here, right? Um, and what's interesting is I seem to recall we were talking about Ethereum in here, um, and uh, this is sort of what I was fearful of. Um, I, I, you know, I was reluctant to get involved in this, you know, because uh, especially for a little old lady, I'm more of a position trader for those that account. Uh, you know, this is a fantastic example of a blind 61.8 tag and counter trend rally. 
coming out of there. Fantastic trade. And I suppose if you, uh, you know, for the sort of traders in our community that, you know, are basically trading on a daily basis in and out, um, you know, if we zoom down to a lower time frame, you can see a lot of our concepts in here. Can you guys see this beautiful W down here? Mm -hmm. and this this is almost what you live for as a technician. Uh, it's just so perfectly defined. Um, and you know, if we apply our little uh, reload zone concept just off of this, you can see how basically price just came right back into that window there, right? Um, so there were, an, and you could have done a little reload zone off of this rally. And my hunch is that's probably right into there as well. So, you know, the good part about what we do, guys, is that this is scalable on whatever time frame uh, you're interested in. Um, I, you know, I, me personally, I didn't take this trade. Um, I'm kind of rooting for price to come down here a little bit more. And it's interesting because we did, uh, you guys remember we, uh, and I don't know whether, uh, I think I remember sending it out to you, Alex. I don't know whether the coinage you boys saw. But I actually put a, a, um, a post out, and actually I suppose we should probably be looking, should we be looking at this on Polo or Bitterex? Which one do you think is the more real one? Um, Polo has a lot more volume. Okay. So uh, I did a, a tweet, and I just asked sort of the uh, crypto community where they thought um, it was going to bottom. And um, I thought it was really interesting. If you just do a nice little simple A, B, uh, and then clone that CD. That sort of painted a ultimate target down in this area here. Um, and it was interesting because our poll results, I think, were like 12, 13. Um, the fact that this low here is lower than this low, and can you guys see? Yes, this is a bit of a W. I mean, it's not bad, but hopefully, you guys can appreciate. Uh, as a technician, I kind of want to see this low tested again, All right? Um, and at the very best, you know, ideally on the higher time frame charts, maybe we do like a reload zone and test this uh, old low there. I don't know whether you can see that's that white line. And uh, just a reload zone off of this range here. That's interesting how that sort of paints a... If I was sort of day trading this and watching really closely for an entry, do you guys see how this original little bottom, I'd love to get price to come right down into here. And, you know, in an ideal world, we get a nice little W through here and away we go, right? Eh? Uh, can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. see? Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe the Dell will be the catalyst to put us in that zone. I don't know. If I understand correctly, you're saying that if somebody got uh, this Dow at uh, one, and then uh, you know, and they got a whole bunch, and they have incentive to take profit, maybe we will see this thing come back down. I don't know. When I look at this over longer term, I don't like the fact that this is just a V. At some point, I do think this low needs to be tested. And if we do come along and uh, te you know test this horizontal support level, come back and test this original double bottom, that really wouldn't surprise me. And if I was a day trader uh, looking at these, uh, you know, and then I'd zoom in on a lower time frame chart, uh, I might you know seriously hunt for like divergences and Ws and stuff right down in this sort of green box area, um, and really really focus in. If you can somehow get yourself to begin, you know, buy against these lows. Then you know if this thing does crap out, well, you're just going to walk if it breaks these lows. And I, I certainly couldn't chase price up here. This is just a little bit too far, too fast for me here. Um, you know, and it's interesting. I was talking with a, a student today, and really, um, I really like this concept of just, you know, uh, can you guys see how uh, we kind of have a trading range here, where we have, you know, there's this high, this high, this Ooh. high now, this high. And then this low, this low, this low, this low, this low. So we almost get this sort of ranging type behavior, right? This is uh, Alex's gun at a million bucks. This is Alex's gun at like five bucks, right? And it's just ranging back and forth. Mm -hmm. right? May, uh, no laughs? I thought maybe that would make a laugh. <laughs> anyway, was so if I was going to, uh, can you kind of see how we're almost getting a bit of Emmy type action up at the top end of this range here? 
you know, even this candle, we went zooming up there, then we backed off, then you can see we rallied up and tested that high. Can you guys see that? Lower high, and then rolled over. So you could actually argue there's a little bit of a top already working at the top end of this range. Um, that's how I would be looking at Ethereum right at the moment. Um, and as I said, off of the higher time frame, off of the dailies, I'm still, you know, there's the 200 period moving average sitting down there. Uh, and the ABCD is down into here. Do you guys see, uh, remember we used to talk about tick, wick, uh, wicks and tails like to be eaten? Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard it a few times. You got this funny old candle right here. You see that big old honking tail right there? That can be a little bit disturbing. You know, like Alex went in, stepped in, and bought against these lows here, which is fantastic trade. If we come back down and we fail at these levels, my hunch is we've got to go down and eat this tail take us down to this 200 period moving average and really one could argue your next key support if Alex's level fails in here our next key support is down at this low here. Does that make sense? Yep, yep. A couple of guys I know uh, who really follow uh, Inner Circle Trader a lot they, they yeah. kind of pointed out those two buy zones like the first one that I bought and then lower yeah. down it where you just pointed out Brian those are the yeah. two main order blocks. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of, like, that's why I say this, whoever's running this chart is, like, a master market maker because uh, the search and destroy events and all this, uh, the, the candles and fractals that are being painted, they're all masterfully done. Like, they're, it, it's a very beautiful chart that we see here. Well, um, I do recall that um, Bill is involved in this story, isn't he? Uh, Bill Gates? Oh, uh well, it, sort of. I mean, I, Microsoft Azure, if that's what you're referring to, their yeah, their cloud. I have the impression service. that Microsoft took a fairly active role in this, and and Microsoft. Just so you guys know, Microsoft Stock Traders, those guys have been, uh, you know, they they operate the stock market very well too. So that doesn't surprise me, you know. That, that, and you know, we've sort of talked a little bit about this over time, how crypto is now growing up. So now uh, we can literally see the evolution of these assets even in the price action. Right? Uh, I think that's an excellent observation, Alex. Um, all right. Uh, so, you know, me personally, uh, it, we did have a mountain man level. That's not enough. I would prefer, you know me, whenever I'm buying the alts, I love to buy a line in the sand. Um, I don't think I could have bought this, but I could understand day traders could have taken a shot off these lows, and that was a pretty good trade there. So, so Brian's right now at a, at a don't, not, not a Dow? Pardon me? <laughs> You're saying don't rather than Dow? <laughs> oh, that was uh, terrible. Yeah, that's, that's all I could do. There's been so many memes about this. It's just like, uh, I don't know what I co, but when I do, I Dow. <laughs> uh, terrible. All right, well... Yeah, I think that covers Ethereum pretty well. Like you've outlined my two buy locations already, and uh... I like this area down in here. And it, what's interesting is I remember a few months ago we talked a little bit about this area being revisited over time. Mm -hmm. And it, if I was going, I mean, I'm long from right off the bottom, um, but if I was going to buy those coins back. I would probably want to hunt somewhere off of this line in the sand and yep. attempt to use those. Well, let's uh, let's go off of uh, the the number two crypto because apparently all it's used for is to buy Ethereum. Uh, let's talk about Bitcoin a little bit. BTC. Actually, yeah, what do, you think? do you guys remember a week or two ago? Um, uh, I remember we were sort of chatting. You know, uh, Bitcoin was moving up. Uh, I took my uh, my short hedges off. Yeah, yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, I remember we were talking about where where Bitcoin was gonna go, where was it gonna top out. And I remember uh, Greg. Do you remember Greg? He was like, uh, I think we go 460 and then 500. And I remember on one of our tweets, our interactions, I was kind of like, I could see 460. And I, and I guess we should start off with what exchange should we be looking at? Your guess is as good as mine at this point. Uh, probably stamp. I yeah, don't know. I like to analyze stamp, but I know mm -hmm. stamp, stamp's always nice and clean. So well, <laughs> except on TradingView the other day, I drew some really weird lines. What, yeah. Will, what do you know about that? 
nothing. <laughs> I, it was entertaining for us. Or involved. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Actually, and somebody said that somebody gave me credit for getting the trading view charts fixed. I don't think I could take credit for it, but somebody did today. Anyway, I was going on TradingView on a daily basis and saying, can you please fix this chart? Can you please fix this chart? And then uh, one of the moderators came to me and said, well, you have to submit this ticket and then hit this oh, button. Oh, jeez. Sounds like uh, a bunch of red tape. But I did it, and then instantly the chart was fixed. So I don't know what the hell happened. But anyway, so, yeah, it is fixed now um, I, on, on TradingView. Uh, did you guys ever run into any data issues on your site? Um, no, not during that period. Um, mm -hmm. so, no, I mean, not a, I'm not a bit sample. You know, we there's always intermittent, you know, data issues, usually with the Chinese exchanges, um, getting through the Great Firewall and that kind of stuff. But um, well, I noticed that, like, um, Bitstamp's you know, pretty rock solid. We pretty much always have a good connection to Bitstamp. I think it was just strictly trading view because you know Tim Gravity. I don't know whether you know mm -hmm. him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, he was. Uh, he and I were chit chatting away about it, and it just looked like it was strictly trading view because we were looking at like wisdom and stuff like that, and they didn't have any problems. So I think it was just strictly trading view. Yeah, I mean, we didn't have any issues, so yeah, no big deal. Um, all right, so what do we got here? I mean, hopefully, guys, it's pretty obvious. We're right up against the top end of the range, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you're just you can't really get a better example. And, you know, my basic philosophy and what I'm telling people is I'd be more than happy just to buy on a stop if we um, head up through the top here. I might give it a few bucks just to uh, give it some wiggle room, and I'll take a shot against uh, this uh, W that's trying to form in here. That's if it happens. Do you guys remember I posted out a chart maybe about two or three weeks ago of the three scenarios that I thought were going to play out? I did see you guys retweet that. Um, yes. I don't remember specifically. Yeah, I don't remember reading it. It was such a cool chart. Uh, let me see if I can just try and find it. Anyway, the point that I just make is that I thought we were either going to just blast off straight through. Actually, that's probably not what to do. Oh, all right. Stampy the cat? Yeah, I don't know how I got that. <laughs> uh, it, oh, uh, maybe that's going to look like that. I don't know. Nah, that's not going to work. I can't. I, I hate trying to use Twitter on the fly. Guys are crazy. Okay, um, so the point here is that I sort of thought there were three potential scenarios here, which, you know, I mean, that's kind of a cop-out. Yeah, great, you know, you're really committing to something firm there, Brian. But I kind of thought, and I don't know if that's going to work, but I kind of thought we were either going to have a shallow consolidation and continue to move up. We were going to have, uh, and actually, maybe we can do it this way. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so I thought uh, scenarios going forward, and actually we didn't even really hit 38.2 here. I thought we might come down into 38.2 and then head up, or, you know, scenario two is uh, we back off, and then we actually have to come down into the reload zone, and then we head up, um, or we just blast off. I really did feel like there had to be a fight here, and really I think on balance, um, I, so far, we're getting sort of the shallow correction, and hopefully, we're going to have a launch here. I mean, really, no one knows for certain. Um, everybody's got an opinion, and really, that's what makes a market, right? The mm -hmm. question really is, do you have a setup? Is, is there something that can frame your behavior that you do repeatedly day after day in the marketplace, and then you can track how that setup is working? Is it performing to your liking? You know, um, and if not, change it. If if it is performing to your liking, then just keep doing uh, the same thing. Um, when I look at this price action, the only thing I can really take out of this is you kind of see how this is kind of like what we call a cup and handle. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Not really the best drawing. Let's try that again. Down, up, and then a little handle, and up. All right. Mm -hmm. That it's your finest better. work, Brian. <laughs> so long and short of it here is this is actually very normal price action. And if you want to set up, I like the idea. If we do, you can just simply buy on a stop through these highs, and you're going to risk against this W. That's not bad, and I think because of the distance, 
the distance uh, this market should go is you simply take the size of the cup and you can project that and some people will go right off of the lip and that would be your upside target there. If you zoom out on like a weekly chart, you could probably draw the same cup and handle off of like our run from twelve hundred, and then we're we're just making a handle here again. Like, well, I would you know like recursive cup and handles and zoom way down. Uh, you, you can can you kind of see the cup here, Alex? Oh yeah. I don't see any parallel. What I would see though is if we did do this, can you see that might set up a cup and handle off of this high. So we come in here, do our handle, and then this is... Now we're going to 5,000. Up and handle harmonics. Well, <laughs> I mean, this is the way markets move. Usually we're going to get a burst, and then you get a consolidation, and the trade usually comes up with a consolidation. Now, I'm not, you know, we need to understand, please, viewers, please understand this. Nobody knows for certain what's going to happen in this world. And if anybody tells you they know, I think they're full of horse hockey. What we're going to do is we're just simply going to play a game of statistics here. If we do break out, then technically you have an edge where more than... And you, I actually find that like double bottoms, double tops work about... I would even go as high as 70%. 30% of M's and W's that we follow, they do fail. 30 that's a very real number. But on the other side, 60, 70% of M's and W's go to our ultimate target. And as a trader, that's all we really do is we just play a game of statistics. All right? I don't know whether you notice, Alex, but uh, you're sharing your screen. I don't know whether that's a private uh, channel. Well, um, yeah, I found this, and I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, all right. the, uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll present you, Alex, for a second here. <laughs> This article here, uh, um, someone shared this to me. According to the Mt. Gox leaks from early 2014, our brand new Satoshi Craig Wright bought 17 bitcoins at a rate of about $1,200 each. So he literally bought the top of the market. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, for like 20 grand. Maybe he's a good coder, but he's definitely not a good trader. <laughs> Yeah. You know, that's where we say a short-term trade turned into a long-term investment. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure why you would need to buy 17 bitcoins when you already have hundreds or thousands or however many it's supposed to have. Exactly. Oh, and apparently he bought the the top of the Cypress pump, too. So, I, I don't know. This is just hilarious. Like... Well, uh, maybe, and maybe that's it. Maybe he uh, he is getting close to his break-even point on his average, and he's like, I just need the market to go up a little bit yeah. higher, and I can dump the whole fucking thing, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe that's where these Bitfenix, uh, like, market buys are coming from. He's just trying to average up, or average down. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, the technical perspective... Um, we have, you know, this bullish market structure. I doggedly stuck to my trading plan, and I was willing to uh, carry my uh, short hedges against this market structure top. That's been broken, so I basically uh, covered those positions. Um, and if we can tick up through the top here, I, I can literally go and start strapping on uh, speculative long positions from my perspective. Um, I would ideally, to be perfectly honest with you guys, I would ideally love to see her come back into this reload zone first. That that would be my my druthers. You know, eat this big honking tail. Can you guys see this tail here? Right, just massive. Just go and eat that. Put in a nice W here, and I'd be a happy camper to go and load up. But uh, my hunch is uh, my hand is probably going to be forced here. And it's going to be a higher anxiety trade for me. I'll tell you that much. Um, but it is in my trading plan, so I'm more than happy to take it. That looks like it will be perfectly timed with the Dow voting to sell all of its ETH for Bitcoin. Oh, geez. It's all intertwined. Yeah. <laughs> it's all um, you know, it'd be interesting when that ICO and all. Or is it an ICO? I don't even know. Um, one thing that I did notice, and I don't know whether it's going to play out this time or not. But we all know, of course, that July 11th is the big day, right? Uh, I thought it was earlier, like the July 4th. We only have about four what? more. Um, 
Uh, and last time I if looked, Bitcoin halves on the fourth of July. It's going to oh, be. What's happening glorious. here? Why is that date getting closer and closer? Uh, because the network's speeding up still. Like uh, the, the 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 difficulty goes up means miners are actually solving slightly faster than ten minutes. Um, so and now, oh, see, why does this say eleventh of July? Yeah, I mean it's constantly changing based on the difficulty at any given time, really. So uh, let me check the other site that I use, Bitcoin Clock. Yeah, I was saying the eleventh too. See, I had someone tell me they uh, had a, a site that calculated it differently. And it was earlier than that, so uh, I don't know. Those, this countdown was for Litecoin too, and it was pretty accurate. So I would say yeah, the 11th weekend is probably pretty close. It'll probably happen on the 10th. So I was watching that date, and what I noticed, and this is you know, I do a lot of sort of market studies, and that I'm a really big believer that I don't think that actual market action itself is isolated. I actually think very much like in nature with the concept of fractals and stuff, um, I actually think that a lot of the price action you see in the marketplace is repeated over and over. And what I noticed, um, I've done a few of these studies, I noticed that, you know, just for example, from the date where Bitcoin bottomed its last cycle to its actual fundamental event was about 70 bars. And I've seen this number repeated uh, repeatedly. Um, and if I uh, project off of the 11th of July, 70 bars, guess where it is? That's basically... A few days ago. Yeah, yep. I mean, basically, we are into the window where if this thing's going to sort of act the way it has typically acted in the past into these monster face rip rallies, we should actually start seeing a bottom come in here. Um, I kind of, Do you guys see how this kind of went in two phases here, this last correction? This is, a, you know, for those that study Elliott Wave, this is a very normal Elliott Wave correction. This uh, A, B, C, D. Right? That's very normal in the Elliott Wave corrections. So I was looking at price action here, and I'd really like, we got the AB off of that high, and it's not as dramatic as that, but you can see from high to low. And I'm just waiting for that final shoe to drop, right, that CD. And I was really hoping it was going to come right in here. And considering that we're getting so close on this window here, my hunch is we're very close to some sort of pivot dig here on Bitcoin. So, I'm actually, I would like price to be lower, but I am actually preparing myself to be long heading into this having a long. If, of course, we get the bullish structure come in. And you could argue, can you guys see the W that's trying to form here? I don't like the yeah. fact that this close was lower than this close, but I can <clears throat> see the market is really trying to turn here. And, you know, do you guys ever hear me talk about the bot? Right. Yeah, I think we've, we've heard it once before. Anyway, it's just it is one way to trade uh, A B equals C D harmonic patterns, and uh, basically, let's see if I can get these lines right here. Uh, no, I'm missing one. Um, basically, it's actually suggesting that this is an area we should keep an eye on in that if I just simply uh, clone this action from here to here, then if I actually project the bot levels, it's going to give us a price target. Uh, where are we? Up in the... Did I get that right? Uh, that's here? Yeah, there we go. Up into here. Actually, not quite as far as there. But that gives us a target of five and a quarter area. Maybe that's the way we sort of stair-step our way higher. So those people that are sort of hunting setups and trend continuation, I know one uh, site member in particular who is uh, really trying to practice his trend continuation trade. Um, you know, keep an eye on on these bullet levels, and if this is a trend continuation, then uh, try and participate this way. Let's see if I did this right. Uh, nope, got it backwards. Uh, reverse. Kind of hard to uh, think and talk at the same time. Not very good at it. Uh, all right. Hey, so, we gotta we gotta hit that alt wheel at least one time, by the way, too. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, but I'll just finish off with this. So this bot basically says you want to buy at the 25% level, you're going to move your stop to break even at 50%, stop to trailing at 66, and your ultimate target is going to be that AB equals CB pattern. You guys see how the market is setting up a double bottom right off of that bot entry level. Can you see that? Do you think that's an accident? I don't think it's an accident at all. So if I get another test of these lows and just put in another nice solid low here and then turn back up, then my bot setup, which I used to use when I traded crude, it will fire a buy signal. And what's interesting is the gold chart actually looks very similar. It has almost exactly the same uh, bullish ABCD pattern. Work. Okay. Yeah, what do you think? Is that enough on uh, Bitcoin for tonight? Oh, that, that was really good, Brian. I appreciate that. It's, it's good news for BTC holders, potentially. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to play out how the story is going to go with all the, all the stuff that I know is going on. As long as we keep making higher highs and higher lows, then the bull's in charge. As soon as we start aiming out here, and the cool part about it, audience, is you know the tools to look for. Um, it's, you know, we did potentially top out here, and then they went and resolved that. Phew! Bitcoin community goes, phew! <laughs> All right, Brian, you want to take a spin big that wheel? Let's, let's spin the big oh, wheel. Yeah, okay, so uh, I think I have the wheel. Uh, oh, yeah, I have it over here. Okay, so we got to switch screens. And how am I doing on talking? Am I talking too much? You're too. Um, no, we're, we're doing good. We just... We've got about 10, 15 okay. minutes or so. so we've got we the, overdid it a little on the combo. Yeah. We've got the junior wheel, Digi, EXP, AUR, Arch, BTC, SYS, can't read these other ones, right? Trump, everybody's rooting for that Trump coin tonight. <laughs> then we've got the senior wheel, Dash, BTS, NMC, LTC, MAID, PPC, Doge, and XRP. So what do we want to do, juniors or seniors? Seniors. Right. I know a lot of the bigger guys want to see these weather the Bitcoin storm. Thanks, right. May. Nice. This network has been like perpetually like releasing for a while. They could reset it at any moment, but it is technically like launched. So very hopeful for it. It's very cool stuff. Um, I get the kind of feeling that this is almost uh, bouncing. In uh, I've seen a number of these. Like I strapped on a little uh, F. FCT. Brian, your screen's off, by the way. Oh, sorry. No, I thought we don't love looking at you, though. Uh, all right. Um, I've seen a lot of these alts look very similar. In fact, um, I had put out a tweet a, a little while ago saying, you know, uh, it's actually we're, a lot of these, you know, you saw on Ethereum how it touched the Mountain Man level and reversed. Um, this one. Same sort of thing. We're starting to get in down into some very interesting price act, uh, you know, territory trade location. Um, and it, what's interesting in my community, and we just started a new term, so I got a whole bunch of uh, new students. They're all super gung ho, and it's interesting to hear their sort of talk about uh, how they like this made uh, safe story. So I don't really understand why uh, this coin is, has so much more sex appeal than any other. Um, but hopefully you guys can appreciate. Remember how we saw in Ethereum how I was kind of saying I'd like to see the 200 period moving average tagged? Yeah. And I'd like to see it dip down. That, yeah, you do have 200 MA up too. Yeah. yeah, and now, you know, I wanted to see a series dip down into this reload zone. Um, you can see that Maid has done that here. And what I also like, and you know, it's kind of unfair to the public, but can you guys see how this thing just literally face ripped its way down here? It literally lost half of its value in just like less than a week, eh? Whoosh. Which, you know, probably broke a lot of, you know, margin traders, sort of new traders' hearts, uh, washed out the market. You know, uh, Alex was talking about that ICT gentleman and his order block. Hopefully you guys can see how you know, this market was starting to tip over here, and somebody stepped up and said, no, you're not going down anymore. You go up now. And so as a result, whoever put those lows in there, they have kind of a vested interest in defending these purchases. Does that make sense? 
right? So mm -hmm. when price slams into these levels, right, and of course wicks and tails like to be eaten, look at those big honking tails there, the price slams into these levels, all the margin traders, they're all getting flushed out, right, stops going off right, left, and center, the irony of it all is all they're doing is that they're just bringing it back down into a previous support zone. What I do like about this on top of this fact is that, of course, off of the entire range, this is what we like to call that reload zone, right? That's 61.8 to 78.6 pip. I'm getting a little concerned here on a lot of these coins in that you guys get the impression, can you understand, have you ever heard me say the expression too far, too fast? Yep. I'm getting concerned that I'm seeing a lot of these markets that had just face rip rallies up are actually ending up giving back a huge chunk of these rallies. And I think this was simply a function that, you know, and you remember we were all, I mean, it was ridiculous there in January, February, March, right? I mean, we were banging out doubles every bloody day. I mean, hell, we even got Alex talking about banging out doubles. <laughs> we got... <laughs> Something's wrong with this picture, right? <laughs> and so, you know, I think that we're going a little too ahead of ourselves. I like this area, and, and kind of like Ethereum, and I've got a couple that I've strapped on here recently, like that FCT kind of thing. I like the idea of a bounce, but I'm a bit concerned that, again, you know, first things first, what letter of the alphabet is this? Is that a V or a W? It kind of looks VE. Um, and, you know, you saw how the V acted here, it had to be tested, and the V acted here, it had to be tested. I'm a bit worried that we're not done here yet. However, for those people that, uh, you know, didn't want to buy into the fluff and literally piss their money away, at least now we're getting into an area where I think, you know, you may not be getting, like, the bottom, but at least, you know, you guys remember when me talk about, like, ranging markets, right? There's the top end of the range, and there's the bottom. And if we can just force ourselves to try and buy assets near the bottom end of the range, and then just simply be nice and patient and wait for a test at the top end of the range, we actually often do pretty well. So I do like the idea that we're coming in. I think you guys, do you guys remember uh, at least a couple weeks ago I was putting out tweets, the long, painful process of finding a bottom. Do you guys remember that? Uh, yeah. I, I kind of think that that's, that's what this is. This could take a while, right? I don't think we go, boom, straight up to new highs. At very best, so you know... probably going to just range for a while. And... Yeah, you know, it, this thing's going to take a while to turn it. Whoops, and then it's going to go over here, and then... <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> we got to wait for, I think, the oh. to make up its mind. Oh, look at that. Now I can't get rid of it. Darn, I hate my Sorry, Will, I interrupted. Okay, so... Um, well, what I was just saying, buy, sell, buy, sell. There we go. Um, all right, so, you know, my hunch is... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we have to do some sort of saucer type bottom. Remember, we were looking at cup and handle and all that kind of fun stuff. And then through this period, when you start to see W's come in, then we can start getting looking for higher highs and higher lows, right? And the bull is back. Well, what I kind of see, I think, playing into that, Brian, for like the network launching is that you're going to see like minor dumps, and then you're going to start seeing like applications being developed on made. Yeah. And that's when the value starts coming in again. So yeah. you can kind of maybe look at this as like the Ethereum launch as like if you only look at the downtrend side of it, it's probably going to look very similar to like when that launched. Uh, uh, you know, we can clearly see where the uh, floor in this thing is, right? Right down in here. And, yeah. you know, a lot of people would say, uh, you know, Brian, take a look at me. Tell me where to buy it. And they go, oh, you can totally tell where Brian's going to tell you where to buy it. Right here. <laughs> this might have to do this process to come all the way right down to this floor. Look at this tail right here, son of a bitch. That looks awfully suspicious in there. But the point here is we're not pissing our money away by buying the top of the market. Even if maybe you start just nibbling in here. Look at I'm not Mr. Perfect Market Timer. I don't know. But at least now when we're starting to buy in near the bottom end of the range, at least you're not just throwing your money away. Right? Is it a screaming pound the table? you got to buy this thing today. It's going straight up. No, we're not in that kind of market anymore. 
sucks, but that's the way it goes. Cool. Okay. Well, I think it's uh, getting close to that time. Time to uh, wrap her up. Oh, shitty. Sorry. Do we want to sneak one more in, or are we out of time? Uh, it's up to you guys. All right. Well, we might as well pick one from the junior wheel. Let's see if we can get... We're going to time you, Brian. We want, uh, like, one-minute TA. Okay. Right. <laughs> really, really quick. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm doing my best. No, we talked a lot of the beginning. Yeah, we just we ate up a lot longer with our mm -hmm. chit-chatting. Sorry to our fans. We kind of lost a couple of your points. Oh, I'm going to leave them hanging for next time. Yep. Okay, so no Trump, but we got this BTC. Oh, yeah, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Um, you know, one minute TA, you can, guys can clearly see where I was uh, most interested in this bad boy. Obviously, this is a nice pop. Uh, through 945, we could have easily gotten off. Jeez, how many doubles is that? That's ridiculous. I got a funny feeling um, I even got off uh, a double or two. Is this VTC, is that what it is? Yep. So, but it's been a while since I've been in this thing. Five hundred percent return. Well, that's not bad. Uh, so I, I, I'm not trading this right now. I've made my money. Uh, right now, I would, you know, I'm a little concerned. Lower highs and lower lows. They tried to take it up here, looking good. Bit of a bottom here, but you can kind of see we're just stuck in a range here, right? Looks to me like there's your top end of the range. I would hazard to guess. And I know it's kind of dangerous, but it looks to me like there's the old market structure breakout. This is the ultimate bottom. We might have to come all the way down here. Just be careful, guys, you know, especially those people that like to short within our community. You can clearly see a floor here. Can you guys see that? If this thing breaks, this floor, it's probably heading right down the, the toilet. You mean a floor based on the moving average? No, on price itself. The, do you see the A, B equals C, D projects us down into these lows? And look how every, you know, day after day after day after day, somebody was defending this level like crazy. Can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, and what a coincidence. Look how we're sitting right there. I mean, this guy's just basically peering over the edge. Do I jump? <laughs> do I jump? All right? And the sad thing is, of course, is that we have this harmonic that's saying, you got the green light to jump if you want to. So, eh, certainly wouldn't be buying this right now. Um, I suppose we could, you know, I, I, no. I, I, I mean, I could argue maybe let's take a look at it when it gets down into here. Um, and Or, you know, let's start seeing the moving averages turn up. Let's see what moment. Uh, was that over a minute? Uh, yeah, you're at uh, two minutes, Brian. So I say... Uh, Am I going to buy this? I've already made 500% return on the investment, so really... Totally free coins. Would I buy it right now? No. Set some alarms. All right. Yeah. Uh, really, watch this level down in here, whatever this ABCD is. 4341. Four, four, Brian, three. you're in overtime already. I think uh, I think we got her. But uh, <laughs> it's been a really good chat, guys. I hope, uh, Brian, you kind of grasped the Dow a little more, but I look forward to hearing any more questions that you might have. And uh, totally. kind of, this has been did a really cool conversation. Was, did I mention this was an island top reversal? <laughs> <laughs> ABCD. <laughs> I'm just playing with you guys. I'm done. I'll shut up now. Uh, <laughs> I hope right. you, I hope the audience likes what I do. Please give your feedback. If I'm full of hot air and you guys don't uh, see any value in this, I'm more than happy to ride off into the sunset. Oh, um, please, Brian, Brian. They love it. Let me tell you honestly. You don't see a lot of the comments because you're not posting the YouTube videos, but. You need to go back through and read some of these. Comments. Okay, good. So if, if this is good stuff, I'll keep uh, I'll keep on keeping on. And it's it's great what are your critics gonna say? Is like this guy only got seven time return on his money in a year? Like, what is he doing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh no, I'm I'm just playing you, Brian. Like I tell some uh, friends who are not in crypto about uh, your returns and your trading style, and they're like, I love it. Sounds sounds like uh, something I could do. So you yeah. make it easy for well, everyone. This is from my, my broker days, right? Because I did, I do exactly what I did on the penny stock market here on the altcoins. Basically, exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Well, right we on. can uh, we can wrap it up at that. Um,
Brian, what uh, if if somebody wants to learn how to trade like you, is there a website they can go to? Do you have anything <laughs> yeah, out there? You. Thank you for the softball. Thank you. Um, basically, our site, therationalinvestor.co. Uh, we just started a new term, so if you are interested in enrolling in our education programs, our next term will start in September. And I think you guys got to remind me. Um, uh, we had a contest a couple, uh, like six months ago, and uh, that was really, really popular. And then I completely forgot this go round. Um, and I think a couple of people were a bit choked. So we, we should try and remember uh, late in August to do the little raffle for the uh, for the audience. Okay, cool. Yeah, and we're we're gonna be ordering some new Coinage shirts and stuff too. So maybe we can give like the runners up some Coinage oh, yeah, or something yeah. like that. Oh, awesome. That'd be fun. Um, and uh, you know you're more than welcome to pop on the site. Um, you know, very. Uh, what I really love is the fact we've been I've been teaching this program now for two or three years. So I have traders now that have been working with me for a solid year. Man, some of these traders are just monsters. They're just awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, and I love. It's just such a nice positive environment. I love coming into a nice troll-free environment every day and talking crypto. Um, so yeah, the rationalinvestor.co. Feel free to pop on over. Uh, you know, you're more than welcome to pop in the chat room and ask me questions uh, at your leisure. Um, and I'll be more than happy to try and help you any way I can. Right on. Cool. Um, and on that note, I guess we will uh, say sayonara until next time. Uh, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this content. Uh, helps kind of helps us with visibility out there um, and. Uh, Definitely feel free to share on Twitter. Appreciate it. So happy trails, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. Bye.